The Environmental Working Group is an American activist group that specializes in research and advocacy in the areas of agricultural subsidies, toxic chemicals, drinking water pollutants and corporate accountability. EWG is a non-profit organization 501 C3. Founded in 1993 by Ken Cook and Richard Wiles, EWG is headquartered in Washington, D.C. in the United States. A sister lobbying organization, the EWG Action Fund a 501 C 4 organization was founded in 2002. The accuracy of EWG's reports and statements has been heavily criticized, as has its funding by the organic lobby and its alarmist campaigning topic projects topic chemicals and human health EWG has created a cosmetics database which indexes and scores products based on EWG's views of their ingredients. Their guide to pesticides in produce lists 44 fruits and vegetables based on the number of pesticides that were found to contain according to United States Department of Agriculture data. The organization has also constructed a database of tap water testing results from public water utilities. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Dirty Dozen. The EWG publishes a Dirty Dozen list of foods with the highest pesticide residue, and recommends that consumers look for organically produced varieties of these products. In 2016, strawberries headed the list. EWG's Shopper's Guide is based on laboratory tests done by the Department of Agriculture's Pesticide Data Program or PDP, and the Food and Drug Administration. Most data come from the annual tests conducted by USDA researchers. Critics of the list have suggested that it significantly overstates the risk to consumers of the listed items, and that the methodology employed in constructing the list lacks scientific credibility. The list continues to be criticized as scare tactics and a 2011 study showed that all of the items on the list have safe levels of chemical residue or none at all. A 2011 analysis of the USDA's PDP data by Steve Savage found that 99.33% of the detectable residues were below the EPA tolerance and fully one half of the samples were more than 100 times below. Topic sunscreens In July 2008, the EWG first published an analysis of over 900 sunscreens. The report concluded that only 15% of the sunscreens met the group's criteria for safety and effectiveness. In 2009, EWG updated Skin Deep with a report on chemicals in sunscreen, lip balm, and SPF lotions. The report states that three out of five sunscreen products offer inadequate protection from the sun, or contain ingredients with significant safety concerns. The report identifies only 17% of the products on the market as both safe and effective, blocking both UVA and UVB radiation, remaining stable in sunlight, and containing few if any ingredients with significant known or suspected health hazards. Oxybenzone is on the list and blocks both forms of radiation, but has been deemed unsafe by the EWG due to controversy over its potential estrogenic and anti androgenic effects. Industry representatives called the 2008 sunscreen report inaccurate. Personal Care Products Council General Counsel Farah Ahmed said, It is very clear to me that they the EWG, have a very low level of understanding of the way sunscreens work and the way they are regulated by the FDA and tested by the industry. 
She expressed further concern, I would hate to think that there are parents out there not using sunscreen on their kids because of a report like this that is not based on real science. Representatives from Schering Plow, Coppertone, Johnson and Johnson, Neutrogena, and Sun Pharmaceuticals Corp, Banana Boat also reiterated their product's safety and efficacy. This database has been criticized as having questionable validity and reliability. Synthesis of information, and the classification of the compound polyparaben, which some say does not exist. Commenting on the 2010 sunscreen report, Dr. Zoe Dralos, of Duke University and spokesperson for the American Academy of Dermatology, said the group made unfair sweeping generalizations in its report and their recommendations were based on very old technology. Topic. Involvement in reprimand of John Stossel by ABC A February 2000 story about organic vegetables on 2020 included a comment by John Stossel that ABC News tests had shown that neither organic nor conventional produce samples contained any pesticide residue, and that organic food was more likely to be contaminated by E. coli bacteria. The Environmental Working Group took exception to his report, mainly questioning his statements about bacteria, but also found that the produce had never been tested for pesticides. EWG communicated this to Stossel but the story was rebroadcast months later not only with the allegedly inaccurate statement uncorrected, but with a postscript in which Stossel reiterated his error. After the New York Times took note of the error, ABC News suspended the producer of the segment for a month and reprimanded Stossel, who issued an apology over the incident, saying that he had thought the tests had been conducted as reported, but that he had been wrong. He asserted, however, that the gist of his report had been accurate. Topic: Other projects. The EWG issues various product safety warnings. In 2004, the EWG raised concern over the approval by the Environmental Protection Agency of the herbicide under the trade name Enlist Duo, claiming that schools within the vicinity of farm fields may have children exposed to the herbicide. Environmental historian James McWilliams has described these warnings as fear-mongering and misleading, and wrote that there is little evidence to support the claims made by the EWG. <laughs> <laughs> Finances and funding For the fiscal year ending December 2015, EWG raised nearly $13.7 million and spent $12.5 million. Over 84 cents out of every dollar go toward EWG's program expenses. President Ken Cook earned $289,022 in reportable income in 2015. 